Yeah. What's up, everybody? It's Magic here with RacingDudes.com. Back for another edition of Dr. Miranda Previews with me, as always, is my co-host, Dr. Miranda. How are you doing today? I'm doing great. I mean, it's storming like crazy outside, so you guys may see lightning or hear thunders. Ignore it. It's really crappy weather here. I hope it gets better by the end of the week, but it doesn't look like that. So here we are. <laughs> Thunder and lightning. That's just, it's right when you give your best picks. That's when it's going to hit. And it's really going to underscore uh, your correct picks because we're going to Belmont Park for Saturday's Ogden Fip Stakes is a British Cup winning year in for the Longines Distaff. And if you're new to the Dr. Miranda preview segments, let me tell you, this has been her best division from the very start, the older fillies and mares on the dirt routing. So Dr. Miranda, without further ado, please take it away here. Take us to Ogden Phipps and your top picks. Yep. Like I said, I'm just really excited to be back to my Philly and mares in this field, especially because I've been following a lot of these for the last year. This is my crew. I'm sure a lot of them we're going to see in the Breeders' Cup this staff again. I mean, minus Monoy Girl, we have the best older Philly and mares in the country right now. And this could shape up to be a great race because it kind of seems like it's a level playing field because none of these horses have ever won at Belmont before. So to start off, we're going to go with my girl, Swiss Skydiver. I know everybody knows I've been one of her biggest fans for quite a while now, and I still think she's amazing, even after last time out. But let's just talk about her for just a little bit. She was your three-year-old filly of the year, arguably, hands down. She was your 2020 Preakness winner who beat Authentic, who went to be on Horse of the Year, and she ran a 105 buyer. That buyer is the fastest in this entire field. She is the only horse to have more than one over 100 buyer, and she has three. She's faced the boys twice, got second um, in the bluegrass, and then she won the Preakness. Um, but let's talk about her 2020 campaign. It didn't end the way they anticipated. She ran at 10 different tracks in 11 months. She got five firsts and two seconds. She lost the Kentucky Oaks to a contender in here. That's She Dares the Devil. She Dares the Devil ran the race of her life, in my opinion. She ran the fastest Kentucky Oaks time in history. But then she went on to win the Preakness, and then after that, she went on to the Breeders' Cup distaff. She stumbled out of the gate, and she came, kind of came up short. I honestly think she's needed time off. She was tired. She then came back to the Beholder Mile, impressively with a 101 buyer. Um, and then her last time out in the Apple Blossom, she was up against Latruska and Monmoy Girl. That trip wasn't the best um, because she came right out of the gate. She was great coming out. And instead of Robbie just letting her go and run a race, he kept stopping her. And there was just too much space between her and the top two finishers. The last race, there wasn't a whole lot of pace. And Latruska had the best ride out there. I think this race is going to shape up a lot differently with these horses going right out of the gate. I think it's going to set up nicely for the horses that are stalking instead of wearing each other out. And another stat I want to throw out there is each time that she's came out of the number one hole, she's ran some of her best races. Now, with the number two valiant scratching due to a fever, we move on to Latruska, the number three horse. I've got to give this horse props for her last effort in Apple Blossom. She beat the best, and that's Monoid Girl. She's been steadily improving in her last four starts with the buyers going up each time out. She did lose to She Dares the Devil in the but then meet Monmoy Girl and Swiss Skydiver in the Apple Blossom. She's been working out great with a 58 second five furlong and a 46 second four furlong. But I think that she ran the race of her life in the Apple Blossom. And there's no denying that she deserved the win. But when I see a win like that, where the horse really has to put his or her head down and dig in, I think it takes a lot out of them. An example I just want to throw out there is the Bluegrass Stakes, where we had essential quality and highly motivated. Those horses battled to the very end, and then Essential Quality just came up short in the Derby. And another thing I want to point out is the only time Latruska's race at Belmont, she ran the race, the worst race of her career, and only got a 70 buyer. She's also running for the first time without Lasix. Um, the next one is a number four horse, Queen Nakia for Safi Joseph and Gathleon. She had a great ride in the Royal Delta with Corey Lannery, but I've said the Swans, I'll say it again. The competition at Gulfstream Park this spring was not that strong. She then went on to the top flight at Aqueduct where she came up empty and got fourth place. I just don't think that she's honestly ready for this type of competition. Her best races were at Gulfstream, and this is an entirely different monster she's going to be up against. And just looking at her on paper, she's not the fastest horse out there. Um, she's going to have to have some kind of huge piece meltdown where she's able to close and pull up some kind of meltdown or pull up some kind of upset. Now, with the number five horse, we have the first, the Cox duo with She Dares the Devil. Um, I've always liked this horse, but when I think of her for some reason, I always think of her like Monmoy's girl, young prodigy. I don't think she has nearly the talent as Monmoy girl. And if Monmoy girl was in here, 
I wouldn't even give her a second look, to be honest. But let's look at how she's done lately since her layoff after the spinster where she didn't run her best after she had that massive Kentucky Oaks win. Um, she's been two for two this year. She beat Latruska in the Zary, and then she won the Latron against Ebutante and Finite. With both of those races, they, people have just let her have the lead, and she's kept it the entire time. And I just don't think that's going to be the case here with the horses to her inside. There's no way the Ortiz brothers are going to let her loose. Now, she's going to be there in the very end. I believe that. But I think she's going to have a speed duel with Latruska and she's going to wear her down. Now, with a number six horse, this is a horse I've never actually handicapped before coming out of the New York. That is Water White. She comes from New York, which is a big plus. She's on her home track. But with that said, she's never ran a buyer over 90 in her career. And this is a huge step up from that, what she's used to. She doesn't keep I right on top because he's on Latruska, who's the favorite. And another thing I want to point out is that she faced Gamine in the Acorn last summer and finished 19 lengths behind her. Two of these horses in here have beat Gamine, so that just kind of tells you what I need to know. And last but not least is Bonnie South. She has 10 to 1 odds. And I think she's going to fall to bigger odds, and she's going to be very overlooked because she's Brad Cox's other horse. I like that angle. I do not think she's that far behind Cheaters the Devil and talent-wise, and I just don't think we've seen her best efforts yet. She's been training out great at Keeneland, and I think she's going to show up. I found interesting that Dan brought up in the Rocket Hour this morning is that when you think of Brad Cox, you think of Florent Giroux. Well, looking at Jackie Trainer stats, Joel Rosario has a better win percentage on dirt races with Cox than Flo does, and that's at around 38%, and I just don't think you can overlook that. So with all of that said, my top pick is Swiss Skydiver, the number one, and I'm not just picking her because she's one of my favorites. I didn't pick her in the Apple Blossom. I didn't pick her in the Distaff, but I just think she's better than this field, and she didn't get to show it last time out. With the jockey change from Robbie Alvarado to where he's only won three races in the last nine months is a huge plus for me. Not to mention, Kenny McPeak really has some guts with this horse. He loves her. He wants her to be best. He took her all the way out to Belmont and is just keeping her at Churchill Down for the Florida lease, which is in a couple of weeks. I think that Latruska and She Dares the Devil are going to wear each other out because they both want the lead, and Swiss is just going to stick back. And another thing I want to say about Swiss Skydiver, really quick, get off my rant. <laughs> um, I just keep reading people saying that she's not that good of a horse anymore. They're just overbetting her. And I'm just out of her three out of her last six races, she's ran over a hundred buyer. So that to me is like telling me that you're going to stop boy girl because you're last her last time out. I just don't get it. But underneath an exacta, I'm going to try to catch a price and I'm going to put in Bonnie South and Swiss skydiver in a $10 exacta straight. And hopefully we can win. Now, underneath that, I'm going to put in a trifecta and superfecta box. I'm going to throw in both Cox horses and Latruska. So both of those will be one, three, five, seven. You know, it's going to be a good day when, for Brad Cox when Dr. Miranda is actually on board with one of his horses, if not two of them. It's usually, if she's against Brad Cox, it's usually a pretty winning angle. So we'll see what happens when you're on the two Brad Cox horses here along with Swiss Skydiver. Dr. Miranda, thanks so much for going through the field for the Ogden Phipps. Let the folks that know at home where they can follow you for all your tips and insight. At Miranda Bungie. Perfect. We'll see you next time. Make sure to racingnews.com. Go to check out the inside track to the Belmont Stakes Wagering Guide. It is available now for sale. We'll see you next week. Good luck this weekend.